that's all. So uh, the reason that I decided to talk about this today is because I was on social media recently and I saw an ad that showed a picture of a woman with her hair tied back in a bun wearing a blue button down shirt and obviously intended to be a very professional woman. Uh, and it showed that she had a giant armpit stain, okay? So um, it said something on the caption along the lines of, concerned about excess armpit sweat, click here. So, uh, I went and um, clicked on the ad uh, because I wanted to see what this could possibly be about. Uh, and it turned out that it was an ad for some kind of special antiperspirant wipe that you could use to stop this excess armpit sweat. And the thing about it that really caught my attention was uh, in the body of the ad, it said, um, something like, concerned about excess armpit sweat, uh, it may not just be excess sweat, it could be axillary hyperhidrosis, talk to your doctor now, uh, because this was apparently a prescription item. And uh, the problem that I have with that marketing tactic is that the phrase axillary hyperhidrosis has a lot of syllables and it includes a lot of unfamiliar sounds and altogether is a really unfamiliar, very scientific sounding phrase, axillary hyperhidrosis. The word axillary means armpit region and hyper means excessive and hydrosis means sweat. So the ad was saying, are you concerned about excess armpit sweat? Talk to your doctor about excess armpit sweat. But it was making it sound as though that excess armpit sweat was actually some sort of disease, a pathological condition. And uh, this to me is something that happens very frequently uh, in our society. There is a problem that is diagnosed by a inventor or a pharmaceutical company or a surgeon. And once that problem is detected, they solve it somehow. And a lot of those problems are not actually problems and they aren't disease states for sure, okay? So axillary hyperhidrosis, also known as excess armpit sweat. It's gross. People feel really self-conscious about it when they find themselves sweating a lot. Uh, so of course that's something that people would be concerned about and it's everybody's nightmare to be that guy in a meeting who is uh, sitting there with a giant armpit stain and not even aware of it or even worse aware of it and still sweating profusely. Uh, so what do you do about that and why does it happen? Well, uh, the funny thing about excess armpit sweat is a lot of times it actually happens because you're cold, okay? And that's something that people really don't suspect. They just keep turning their air conditioning down. A lot of times people will have sweats at nighttime and not understand why and they're turning their air conditioning down to 65 degrees or lower and running up their electricity bills and they're still hot all night long and they still wake up in a sweat. And that's because uh, our body has an internal temperature sen sensor that is located in the front of your necks. And when you are too cold or when the blood coming back from your hands and feet is too cold uh, and it goes past that sensor, your brain gets a signal immediately that your blood is too cold and starts flushing your skin, okay? It sends all the blood to the surface of your skin to warm you up so that you don't get hypothermia. And the flushing leads to sweating, especially when it comes to under your arms, okay? So this morning I was reminded of this ad that I saw on Facebook um, because most antiperspirants actually include a lot of aluminum. I didn't look up the ingredients on that particular one uh, and so I don't really know exactly how it worked, but uh, usually when you are stopping your body from performing a function that it performs on its own naturally, you're stopping it from doing something that it's doing very deliberately. 
and that it has a purpose for doing, okay? So the sweat under your armpits is really kind of more an unintended consequence but if you listen to the signal that your body is sending you, which is, hey, I'm cold, and go put on a sweater and a pair of slippers, you will probably stop sweating and you don't need to put an aluminum-based antiperspirant wipe that kills your ability to sweat and will give you cancer decades from now. You just need to listen to what your body's telling you, okay? So... Um, in my practice at patient PT, I find that a lot of times when people have pain that they've been dealing with for a long time or other types of problems that they've been dealing with for a really long time, a big part of the reason that it's gone unresolved is because most medical solutions or consumer solutions to things like that don't actually work with their body to accomplish whatever end the body is trying to achieve. They actually fight against the body to just stop it from doing whatever undesirable thing it's doing, like sweating too much or having an overaction, overreaction to pollen or something like that, okay? A lot of medical interventions, particularly pharmaceutical interventions and many surgical interventions uh, fight against your body's objective in doing those things, okay? And sometimes your body needs to be fought against, okay? Like sometimes you will get an ache or a pain that is just sort of disproportionate and your body will not let it go and you're just suffering unnecessarily and you need to take an anti-inflammatory or something like that and it'll knock it out and it won't bother you again. But something that uh, most people really don't understand about the human body is that virtually every single time you put a pharmaceutical into your body, you are changing some really fundamental underlying biological processes. And even doctors and neuroscientists and the smartest people in the world don't necessarily understand all the implications of those pharmaceutical interventions, those surgical interventions, because our bodies are basically gigantic chemistry sets that operate under the laws of physics. And uh, it's only really when you understand those sciences on a really fundamental level that you can understand exactly how complicated and beautiful our human body is and how hard it is to route around it, to, to think that you're smarter than your own body, okay? Uh, your body will keep fighting against you. It's um, If your body is in pain and you're ignoring that pain or you're taking painkillers for that pain, um, it's just going to keep sending that pain signal. And the pain signal is going to keep getting stronger and your nerves are going to become more sensitive to stimuli and not less. Uh, and eventually that can cause some really serious problems. And so basically my mission as a physical therapist, I feel, is to help everyday people understand exactly what messages their body is really trying to send them so that they can start to work with them and feel better for the long term instead of just continually putting a Band-Aid or an axillary hyperhidrosis wipe on the problem.